All right, what is up guys? VV back with another video, <clears throat> excuse me. And today I'm gonna talk a little bit about deck building. And this is more geared towards the beginner players, uh, not so much the pros or the veterans, uh, not even, maybe not even intermediate players. But even if you are a pro or intermediate level player, I think you could still get something out of the video. And by all means, always or never be afraid to share your experience or your opinions in the comment section below. Uh, the purpose of this video and the purpose of pretty much all of my videos is always meant to be educational. Right, just something to help out the players who need help. It's never meant to be really anything other than that. I'm not trying to, you know, show like, oh, I'm the best player out here. That's that's not my goal as a content creator. Um, yes, I consider myself a very competent player and someone with a, a, a lot of experience in TCGs over the course of 15 years, but I am, I am an educator by profession, <laughs> right? As, as a teacher, uh, that is my actual job. And I consider myself an educator as a content creator as well. Like that is definitely the focus, the, 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 that's what my channel is geared towards. So this video today is going to be based on how to build a deck. And it's a system that I use that I just call the five by 10 method. And so let's go ahead and click on it and uh, get into it. And it divides your deck into five categories. Um, and this, this is specific to One Piece. A lot of times when I do videos that are uh, educational based, they're, they're probably more geared towards all TCGs, just general principles, but this is definitely geared towards One Piece and specifically how that game is built. So, okay, so the basics here, in every deck you're looking to have a certain amount of counters, a certain amount of utility or small body characters, a certain amount of medium bodies, I call them bruisers, or you can also call them blockers if you're going for more of a defensive type of deck. And then you want some large body bodies or some finishers or bosses, whatever you want to call them. And last but not least, depending on what kind of deck you're making, you might also want some events or stages, right? And so, so just to, uh, to go over some of these cards on the screen here, I put them all here for a reason. Notice on the far left we have Otama. When I count, when I when I put counters at the top there, I'm referring to 2K counters that are in your hand. Now, yes, you can be more specific, and you see two cards over where the Punk Gibson is. This is technically a counter, but when I'm talking about counters, I'm talking about 2K counters in hand. And I'm, Punk Gibson is a state, uh, excuse me, is an event when I'm talking about it in the sense of the the five by ten method. Right. So, and then we have small bodies, utilities. Yes, technically Otama is utility. She doubles over, right? Some cards are more than one thing. But I'm really talking about searchers like Nami or even very low costed blockers, right? Very low cost blockers. Okay. Um, so that, so we have Nami. Then we move on over here to uh, medium bodies and that's Gecko Moria here. And then large bodies, Kaido. Right, and then we have an event, excuse me, a stage here and an event. Okay, so that's, that is the basics. So this next um, slide here is gonna talk about it, is just like, a, an it's more generalized. It's showing you this is how I break it down. And as far as what is aggro, what is control, what is mid-range, well, that's gonna depend, right? That's actually going to, it's gonna depend on a lot of things, right? It, it's gonna, it, it's mainly going to, depend on what colors are in the deck, how much removal is in the deck, what is the cost distribution across the deck, how many counters, how many small bodies, medium, large events, everything. It's going to take all that into consideration. And I want to stress that this 10, this, this 5 by 10 method is just to lay down a groundwork for the deck you want to build. Yes, you can always net deck. Let me let me just say that right away. For the there there are certain people who just want to be competitive. Absolutely, you you do what you want to do. I, I don't judge anyone for the decks they want to play. It doesn't matter to me. But for the people who are trying to make their own decks, and and the people who are new at the game and might not have access to all the cards that they 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 might need to be super competitive, this is geared towards you. This. Um, presentation this you know whatever you want to call this this video is geared to you so let's go ahead and dive right into the first deck 
Now, the decks that we're going to be looking at today, with a few exceptions, are going to be like top 10 tournament style decks in, in larger tournaments, regional tournaments, and bigger, right? And this first one, this is what won in Knoxville. This is a Zoro aggro deck. And here's the thing. Notice how there's only four uh, fields. Utility, counters, bruisers, and events. We're missing the bosses. Well, guess what? If you want to build a deck that is a little more aggro, well, if you have a leader and, a, and colors that can support the, that style, you can just take all the bosses out of your deck and distribute those points elsewhere. So you take 10 points out of bosses, and there you go. You got 10 more points straight into utility. And utility, remember what I was saying, is things like searchers, right? We got, you know, we got Ezo, we, we've got Buggy, we've got Curly to Dan. And for those who don't know, Zoro the leader buffs your characters. So in a, in a deck like this, it just makes sense to have a lot of these small utility characters fill up the board wide and swing wide, right? Or fill up the board and swing wide and very low to the ground. Notice we only have seven bruisers and, t and, and 10 2K counters. And then we have a bunch of support events as well, which is interesting, right? That's just nice utility, nice defense, all kinds of different things. So that's kind of your first idea on like, okay, let me go backwards. Do you want to make the deck more aggro? Okay, no problem. Just get rid of all your large bodies and fill out small bodies. Like fill out with small bodies of utility and maybe even some extra events or maybe some extra bruisers. It, it depends on what deck you're playing. And we'll see that as we go on. And none of these, let me say this as well, aggro control and midrange, none of these are set in stone in this game, right? Like, like, we, we, we will probably disagree on certain decks as we go across them. You know, you'll, you'll see certain decks you'll be like, no, I think that's a control deck. You know, I, I oh, I think that's a mid-range deck, right? You'll, and you'll see as we go through them. So Whitebeard, I would consider this a mid-range deck. Other people might con consider this more of a control deck or even an aggro deck, considering it's running these rush cards. You can definitely say that if you want to. But generally speaking, when I see a deck that has 20 bruiser level cards in it. And when I talk, when I call, remember bruisers, those are the medium bodies. I would consider that anything from like a four cost to a seven cost. Uh, and then, you know, the rest is self-explanatory. Uh, you see the utility cards at the top, little one cost blockers, one cost searchers. You got your 12 2K counters. And yes, of course, sometimes your 2K counters can double over as extra utility, like extra damage running a single boss card and would probably you know one thing that we should mention about whitebeard decks is they would probably be running more boss cards but they only have access to a single edward newgate per the uh per the restrictions over here in the west and nine events he's got red you know th this is william craddock's list by the way this like i said all the lists today are going to be top tier lists that you, that you will have that you can find in major tournaments um and you can kind of get an idea of how they built the deck I'm not saying they were using my method, but when you lay it out like this, you can kind of see like, oh, okay, he wanted to have a little more control of the mid game and, and push from there. And that's why you notice how the deck is built. Okay, you know, six, four drops, you know, seven, five drops. You see what's going on there. Okay, next up is law. <clears throat> Aggro is definitely a loose term when referring to law. There's a lot of control aspects to this deck. I'm, I'm not ignorant of that you know but but it is very much low to the ground and runs you know four very strong rush cards and four very strong restand cards and it, you know one luffy three zoro and four just the restand law and it has a lot of utility stuff going on here tons of searchers that it can use later you know to uh find what it needs lots of little low cost blockers Lots of 2K counters. Well, lots, you know, lots. It is 10. And then it's got a few events. Not too many events. It, it would rather have the character utility and the beaters on, on the field. You see what's going on there. Okay, let's keep going. So next up, Crocodile. I would consider this a mid-range deck, but I think a lot of people would actually consider this more of a control-style deck, which is fine. That's fine. You Like I said, you should don't take this mid-range aggro and... Um, uh, control, you know, word, th these classifications as gospel. They're, they're not 100% gospel truth or anything like that. It's just meant to kind of give you an idea of how the deck plays out. 
and how it's built. So for example, this crocodile deck, yes, it does have six boss monsters, making it kind of seem more like a control deck, right? It has tons of removal. It's running four red rocks. It's running four 3000 worlds, two of these uh, dragon twister demolition breaths. Even the bosses are removal. And it's running this full blocker package with uh, Sintamaru and all the Pacifista engine. So you, you might think like, okay, well, this definitely seems more like a control list to me. And you can definitely play it that way. It has tons of blockers, tons of bounce effects, you know. But the way it kind of, the way it plays out is very much mid-range to me. And we'll talk about control in a minute. Because I should have explained in the beginning, when I think of aggro, I think of dominance in the early game. When I think of mid-range, I think of dominance in the mid-game. And when I think of control, I think of dominance in the late game. And that's where these, these bosses really come in handy. But we'll see as we go on. You'll see as, as I go on, or as we go on, it really has a lot to do with the leader as well. So next up is Katakuri mid-range. Um, again, you can almost see this as almost like a control deck with all these bosses, but not really because it's lacking events. I would say the characteristics of a strong control deck is lots of events, lots of bosses, lots of utility. Low in bruisers slash blockers, and counters is actually probably mid because you're gonna have a lot of event support for, for your um, for a lot of your counters, your counter power. Um, but Katakuri, look at how many bruisers are in the deck, and then it has a nice finisher in, in uh, Charlotte Lin Lin and Katakuri. It's running a few events. And then the utility, notice Shirahoshi, even though she's a five cost, that is still what I would consider utility because it is a zero power character. In the same way, you could consider Charlotte Perispero a bruiser. That's fine. You can do that if you want to. It, it wouldn't change much. You would go from nine utility and up to uh, 18 bruisers. So again, just very much of a mid-range style deck. Okay, and if, and if anyone has any questions, by all means, comment in the comment section below. So now we get to the first control deck that we're going to look at, or at least what, what I would consider control. Um, queen. So notice eight counters, only eight counters, but 18 utility cards, like very low cost blockers that have effects on them. Then you got about six blocker bruisers in, in, um, in, in even slightly utility, right, with Sogi King. 11 bosses and seven events. So... When it comes to control, especially control in this game, it has a lot to do with your leader, number one, and your colors. And I would say that that holds true for every archetype. Your leader and your colors are what's going to really determine how the deck can be built. Certain decks, you probably can't really build all that um, effectively as aggro if they, if they cater to more controlling cards, controlling styles. Um, but who knows, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible. But, but for, this, for this deck in particular, Queen, I would consider it control because it's running a ton of blockers, strong removal, and a lot of bosses. So that way when you transition into the late game, you can run the full engine off of the leader's effect and just survive and stay in the game. And for those who don't know, Queen, the leader, the way her effect, or the way his effect works is basically when you have four or less cards combined in your hand and life. Like if you combine your hand cards and your life cards, if you have four or less, you can attach one Dawn and attack. And if you have a character in play <laughs> that has eight or more cost, then you can gain a life. And yes, that's a lot of stipulations, but that's why we specifically are running these um, boss characters here because they're nine or less. And that way we can gain life and whatnot. So very, very powerful. Uh, potentially very powerful um, leader effect there. And, and, and it really builds towards, it gears towards an attrition style late game. Like, okay, I'm in full control. Okay, next up, <laughs> trolling people a little bit here. It's This is the same idea as Law. I know Rebecca is not a aggro list, but I'm messing around a little bit here. Because look at what we're looking at. Like, just, just take a glance here. 12 counters, 15 utility cards. I guess you could argue that Kairos is more of a bruiser, but that still doesn't really help the case. That makes it even mid-range. Because then we have 12 blockers and bruisers. 
11 stages and events. So this deck is very balanced as far as being all over the place, except it doesn't really have a boss card. Sometimes people will run a Kaido or a um, Kuzan, right? And that gives you a little bit of extra strength in the late game. But ultimately, from all of my experience playing this deck, it operates very much like an aggro deck. And if it doesn't, you actually feel worse. Like you, you want it to, to feel like an aggro deck. You want your core to cost him down. You want to be able to attack the turn your characters come to play, just like a rush deck would. And you go from there. Now, yes, I do understand it's meant to be a control deck. I understand. But I'm just saying we're going to look at what a control deck should be in a moment. Okay. So next up, let's go ahead and take a look at Doe Flamingo. This is a very, I would actually consider this a control deck. This is a very powerful deck in the, in, in the sense that it has a lot of card draw, which is, character, which is a characteristic of a um, control deck, is lots of card draw, dependable engine-like card draw. It has, it doesn't have a lot of utility, but it does have a lot of events to, to protect your board and to protect what you're doing. And it has a lot of blockers and a lot of control aspects in Sugar and in Doflamingo. D Don Quixote Doflamingo, the 10, the 10 cost uh, boss card there. It's running 10 2K counters, uh, four of which in the Buena Fiesta are actually searchers as well. You could argue that's part of the utility package as well. And really, if you want to get technical, you can take Nami out of the utility package and put her into the bruisers. Um, this deck can function very much like a mid-range deck, that's for sure. Um, but I, I personally think because of the leader's effect and because of the amount of blockers, it's actually meant to be played as a control-style deck. And that's not to say you couldn't play at mid-range, but I think you guys see what I'm saying. It, it's, it's very much geared into being a control deck. Okay, now we can talk about an actual control deck. No, I am not a big fan of Nami. Uh, I've never played her in a tournament. It's not what I'm trying to play. But this is what I think a control deck should look like at the bottom there. 32 events, only four bruisers, which really doubles over as utility. We all know what Zeph does. Eight utility cards in ways to get cards back or search cards up. And six 2K counters. Just a little bit of 2K counter action. And as everyone knows who's played this game or has played this deck, Kaya is actually not a 2K counter at all. Yes, she, she technically is, but you use her as a draw two, trash two, and then you um, arabesque uh, brick fist her back to your hand. So, you know, it's very much different. It's very, very different from what you might, it might expect. Um, and, and this is, again, let me stress, I'm not a big fan of the alternate win condition that Nami has in particular, but this is a true to style control deck, the way it's built. So uh, very interesting. I do like this a lot, and I, I hope I hope there are I hope we get more support from events in the future, so that we can so that we can actually make a control deck in the future, because as is like I said, we have you know Doflamingo's pseudo control, Queen is pseudo control, and then we're going to go forward here into one of my favorite lists, uh, Black Yellow, Charlotte Linlin, and I just want to show you guys right away, no, notice how balanced this list is. Because I built this list using my five by 10 method. And it did very well for me. I went three and one in a recent uh, store championship, got top eight, you know, it was, it, was a good, it, was, it was good. The only thing that beat me was a white beard. And I, I truly don't think there's any shame in losing to white beard. <laughs> for those who know how this game works, you know, that's not saying much. Like, oh, you lost to a white beard? Oh, you know, wow, that's crazy, right? Um, but I was able to take down two Zoros and, um, and a Zephyr and a, and a Z deck with this. And with this, with a similar list from OP03, with no, none of these OP04 cards, I've been able to do very well in terms as well, like in local tournaments that were pretty large, you know, 20 plus player, or well, I'd say right around 20 player tournaments, where I was able to get second and third. Uh, only losing to players who are extremely good, you know, extremely good at the game and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's running a black, yellow Charlotte Linlin list. That looks like this that's running a 10 10 10 10 10 package and now i want to show this to show that okay if i were to go forward with this deck and really try to hash it out i noticed a few things 
one the game I lost against um, Whitebeard, I was completely overwhelmed with boss cards in my hand. I had five boss cards in my hand that have no counters and, and aren't helping me get to the late game. So I made some changes using this method, saying, okay, well, I can go down a few bosses. I went down one Charlotte Lin, Lin and down two Katakuris and went up three uh, cards elsewhere, right? I think I went up uh, two counters and one utility card, but then I also took down one um, Narakabura arrow because there was one game I think I had too many in hand. It didn't cost me the game or anything, but it was like, okay, I think I might only need two. So I went up one more utility card, right? I went up to four Fukuros. So you see what I'm saying? You can use this method right here to just get started. Like, let me just make a deck that has, the, of, of the colors I want to play, of the leader I want to play, I'll just, I'll throw down 10 utility cards in there, 10 counters, 10 blockers, 10 bosses, and 10 events. I'll play it. You know, you might get wrecked. You might get wrecked the first game. That's fine. That's fine. Then you're going to see what went wrong. Like, be very observant. Like, oh, okay, you know, I had too many bosses the first game. Okay, well, let me take some of the bosses out and then put that elsewhere. You see what's going on. And uh, lastly, I just want to have this screen up. By all means, screenshot it if you want. Th th this is the idea here. This is the idea here. I should say it like that. When I'm building a deck, when I'm starting off, when I'm trying to build my own deck, something I can fight the, the meta with, this is kind of the method I would use um, in this game in particular. I'm going to put all, you know, the, the, ten, the 5 by 10 method, and, and this kind of lays out what it is. Like for your 2k counters, you want the ones with the most utility, right? That's that's obvious, right? For your 10 utility cards, this is your one through three cost characters. You wanna make sure you get enough searchers, triggers, block, low cost blockers, buffers, fillers, draw cards, stuff like that here. And then for your blockers or bruisers, what kind of deck are you trying to build? Are you trying to build a more aggro list or are you trying to build a more mid-range list or control list? Like, what are you trying to build? And that will determine everything. If you're trying to go for a mid-range list, you might want more aggressive characters, aggressively statted characters who are not blockers, who have some type of powerful effect, or even a vanilla character that is extremely well, like, cost-effectively, you know, it's uh, created in cost-effective terms. And then, of course, you got the 10 bosses, Maybe you don't need 10 bosses, right? Maybe you want an aggro list. Okay, we'll take all of the boss cards out if you want an aggro list and throw them all into the utility slot and go from there. And then you got your 10 events. And again, events and utility go hand in hand. You know, they might be removal, they might be counters, they might literally be utility cards, they might be searchers or searches, buffers, fillers, draw card. It's, it's gonna be up to you and how you wanna build the deck. And then last but not least, you know, always consider your keywords when you're building the deck that synergize with the searchers. Uh, so for example, let me go to a deck that has that. So for this one, for example, Doflamingo, you know, we got Nami here. This searches a straw hat or film card. So in other words, you know, it can grab Guild Test Rogues, he's film, but it can't grab Diamante. It can grab Luffy, but it can't grab Doflamingo. You see what I'm saying? So you want to make sure your list has, if, if you're going to run a searcher, like, like Nami here, which is a great idea, if you're going to run that, make sure you have enough decent, you have a decent amount of targets to, to hit with it. Does that make sense? And as usual, if you guys have any uh, questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, uh, next, next thing I just want to mention, always consider a decent balance of cost so that you have a play every turn. What do I mean by that? Make sure you have a good amount of one to three cost characters for the early game, a good amount of four to seven cost characters, and a good amount of eight to 10 cost characters. So that way, think about it like this. If you just put nothing but huge boss cards in your deck, well, what are you gonna play on turn uh, one through seven? You see what I mean? Or say you only put a lot of blockers and bruisers in your, in your deck. Well, what are you gonna play early in the game on turns you know one through two, and then late in the game on turns like four, five, six, and seven? You, you might not be able to transition into the late game effectively. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and then last but not least, uh, this is just a starting template. Make adjustments as you see fit, right? You're gonna be playing the game. You're gonna be piloting a deck. If you think, let's go back to, um, let's just look at my, my uh, Charlotte Linlin list here. If you think that you don't want it to, if you don't want your deck to be control, maybe you should go more aggro, right? Or if you don't want your deck to be aggro, maybe you want it to be more mid-range. Like, let's just take a look at, like, the Katakuri deck. 
maybe you want a list that's you know has lots of bruisers in it where you can just tempo out right you just go you know all right we'll grab a searcher into a big body into a bigger body into the biggest body you know that might be how you want to build the deck um and i i do still have a, a video series planned for taking your game to the next level and in there we're going to talk about control we're going to talk about mid-range we're going to talk about aggro we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff relating to again taking your game to the next level um, and I, I did want to get this this video out first because I want people to be able to make decks I want I want the new players to have something to, to Look at and something easy for them to use because certain players are trying to get into this game And they're they might not have that big of a budget to just go out and buy, you know, some extremely expensive list um, You know, there, there's a few of these lists like for example Katakuri. This is not this is not a cheap deck, right? Even if you're not buying all tarts, some uh, it, this one as well, you know, Queen is not a cheap list. Same thing with, uh, well, same thing with Rebecca. Same thing. With, none of these lists are really getting cheap anymore. They're kind of as the game goes on. I feel like it is getting a little more expensive. Now this is a pretty cheap list, the Nami one, um, but black this black yellow Linlin, This is the opposite of cheap. <laughs> this is the exact opposite of a cheap deck. So anyway, j just just something to hopefully help out some of the newer players. And I can only I can only um, address so many things in a presentation like this. So if there's something I missed, or if there's something you want to know that I didn't um, talk about, or if I miss said something, by all means correct me. Help me out where I miss mess things up. I'm not perfect. And uh, if there's any um, any any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask in the comment section below. I don't want to say I'll answer it, you know, as soon as you know instantly or anything, but I will answer it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, and you guys know how that goes. I might be at school when you, when you message the first time, but but yeah, I hope this helped, guys. Uh, this is I love building decks. It's one of my favorite things to do, and I do want to stress that you know these lists that you're looking at that I use these are not just some random lists that like aren't any good. These are these were lists that have either won tournaments or were in the top you know top 32 of, of large tournaments this zoro deck won a regional this was the second place deck in that regional this was the third place deck in that regional this was like the top some top 16 deck in that regional or top 32 this was a top five deck in that regional um queen was top 32 in that regional as well this was a top 32 rebecca list do flamingo same thing top 32 this Nami control deck is a first place um, deck from the east over over in the uh, Japanese meta. And notice how simple this list is. It's running nothing but four ofs everything and then two Apis for random 2k counters. Okay. Then we have now this black yellow Lin, Lin list. This is one that I created myself. And, and this was the perfect example for me to use to show you guys the, t the, the 5x10 method where you're using 10 all the way down. Okay. And this is just kind of showing how you can make modifications as needed according to what you're having problems with. Because everyone's meta is different. Just understand, these lists that, that you saw here that were winning tournaments, all of these cards were put in the list specifically because they expected to see a certain amount of whichever decks in the, in the tournament. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. And, and again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and this this deck here, the the Whitebeard deck that William Craddock was running from Will to Win Gaming, definitely check out uh, his YouTube if you want to get better at the game. He has a lot of educational material, tutorial style material over there. Um, this list is a perfect example of how he literally went almost almost into full on control mode uh, as a Whitebeard deck. Notice he's running 12 2K counters. He's running nine events that are all counters. They're all like plus, you know, 3,000, plus 4,000 uh, counters. Only has one boss monster, of course. You know, you can only have the one new gate. And then he's just running nothing but beaters, nothing but bruisers in the middle there. So just just incredible. You know, just th this list was catered specifically to try to win a tournament, right? Because that's, that's what this was all about. And, you know, he made his adjustments accordingly. Uh, same thing with the Zoro list. It was built a very, very specific way. Notice how many events are in this in this Zoro list. There's not very many bruisers. It's just straight utility, lots of count, you know, good amount of counters. I don't want to say lots, 10, ten counters. That's, that's a good amount. And then just utility events. Some of them KO, some of them defend. 
You know, it, it's, it's all built around what do I need? Do I need to go defensive here or do I need to go aggressive here? And that is something that you'll, you will learn over the course of learning this game, learning how to play the game. Just because Zoro is an aggro deck, quote unquote, that doesn't mean you can't take your foot off the gas and still win. You can take your foot off the gas, wait for your opponent to overextend, and take him out that way, take board control, or maybe you build up to a certain point and you just run him over. You see what I'm saying? Like there's there's a lot of different factors. A lot, lot of factors going on at, uh, at play here. Okay. And uh, like I said, Law and Rebecca, they're not really aggro decks. They're more of a combo control style. You know, um, I, I, I call them just puzzle box decks, you know, where it's like you just have to make the puzzle pieces work out and then go from there. Whereas like, okay, Crocodile here, mid-range, you know, it, it, all of these lists are made a very specific way to do what they do. Uh, some are a little more balanced than others. Like you see here, 10, 13, 6, 11, 10. That's a very solid distribution of, of, uh, of, his, of his pieces there. And that, 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 that allows for him to have a very strong transition into the mid and late game. V likewise with Katakuri here. Notice how many utility cards into Bruiser cards into boss cards he has. And tons of 2K counters, 13 2K counters, to get out of whatever he needs to. Okay, and yellow, as we know, has a lot of trigger effects, so he also is getting, not only is he adding life from his his character's abilities, but he's also getting additional value from gaining the life, like an additional, additional value, right? Incredible. And then with queen in control, again, gaining lots of life, using lots of triggers, lots of blockers, trying to outlast your opponent, right? That's that's the whole idea of control, and that I want to talk about more in the, in the, in the, uh, the seven-part series I'm working on, is... Control is all about attrition. It's all about outlasting your opponent. Mid-range is all about outdeveloping your opponent. And aggro is all about just overwhelming, right? Outpacing your opponent. Really outproducing. Hopefully that makes sense. There's a difference between outdeveloping and outproducing, right? With aggro and mid-range. But okay, guys, I think I'm pretty much done rambling at this point. Hopefully this helps someone. I do, you know, I do love making these videos. It's something I enjoy doing. The, uh, just, you know, sharing what, what knowledge I've acquired in playing TCGs and playing these games. If it can help anyone, then, that, then that's good enough for me. So, okay, I hope you all enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, as usual, if, if there's any questions, anything I missed, please don't hesitate. Help me out. Tell me what I missed. And, um, yeah, until next time, guys. Peace.